You know, of all the chapters in the book, the one that I want to talk about, the one that you've not talked about a lot, and that's possibly because it's at the end of the book, is the abortion. Mm. And you've actually communicated that really beautifully, if you don't mind sharing that story again. So for me, um, it was a moment in, in my life when I was learning how to swim. Um, I never learned how to swim till I was 30 years old. So my mission when I was 30 was to learn how to swim mm. and then to go diving. Matlab, don't do anything half-hearted or half-assed. You know, you go, you learn how to swim. And where did I learn how to swim? In this really small, tiny pool in this club in Bandra. Huh. Well, you can stand in. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so I think the club was called Celavi or something. Okay. Huh. So I went there to learn how to swim. It was the first time in my life I had put my head underwater. Hmm. And I remember the teacher telling me, you need to breathe out really slowly. So count till four while you exhale. Now that four became six, six became eight, eight became ten. And that's how comfortable I became with water. Until I said, ye to theek hai. But now I want to go conquer the oceans. I want to be comfortable diving. So I remember I was super thrilled. I went to Andamans. There was this friend of mine who said, he will join me or I may have, in, you know, mm -hmm. extended an invitation because I'm a single girl living in the big city. So, yay, let's go. I went to uh, dive. He joined us and it was just, I don't know if it sounds poetic now, but I do remember the incident as if it happened yesterday mm. because it was right after my first night dive. And I was petrified. I jumped out like... I jumped out of the boat, like the propeller yeah. cut my ankle, I was, you know, like grazed and I was bleeding and it was just gnarly yeah. at this point and I was scared and I haven't done a night dive after that till today by the way and I have had so many people come along to say, hey, night dive, hmm. you'll be with us, you'll be safe and I have just never done it till today, which I do want to change. Again, that sounds like as if I may want to have a baby and I haven't <laughs> thought of it. But yeah, but I do remember I was so emotionally down at that point of time that and as shameful as we as a system make it sound, the word sex, I thought it was a release for me at that point. I felt comfortable. I felt held. I felt loved. I felt seen. I felt noticed that we didn't think about anything else. Yeah. We didn't care about anything else. And the holiday was over, the diving was over. I was back to my normal life. I didn't even see the person for many, many weeks because I got back from Andamans and I went shooting for a show in Rajasthan somewhere. Hmm. But I was feeling really uncomfortable inside my body. And then I returned and that's when it hit me, oh God, I've missed my period. So I texted him and I said, I think I've missed my period. And his first reaction, sadly, now that you think of it, was, this is not the way you get my attention. And that broke my heart. And I said, attention? Are you <laughs> like out of your mind? You know what? Keep your attention up your ass. I am going hmm. to get a pregnancy test kit from the medical store. I'm going to do this. I did it and I'm praying to God, it's, it isn't two lines. It shouldn't be two lines. It, no, it can't be. I am not that person. Mm. I am not irresponsible. I have a whole life ahead of me. I don't know what's going to happen. And much to my shock, it was two lines. So I took another test, hoping this was wrong. But I was proved right the second time. I was pregnant and I didn't know what to do about it. So I just sat on the bathroom floor weeping uncontrollably and I just sent him the, the photo photograph the yeah. and he said you wait I'm coming to see you now and I said don't come now I'm going to now figure out who I need to talk to what do I need to do and I remember going and meeting my gynecologist and she was kind and yet while her job requires her to probe and ask you, I felt so indecent mm. and I felt so seen. Exposed. Like, yeah, she could, it was like standing in front of an x-ray machine, let alone another human being. Because she was asking me questions like, uh, 
was it consensual was it a rape she was asking me repeatedly because it's a very traumatic experience if you weren't expecting it uh, uh, at least it was for me so we went into that zone and then she was like is this a regular partner is are you in a relationship with this partner and i just said no 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 and i'm just weeping now and then she said it's okay we've got nothing to worry nothing has happened it's still very early early and yeah. we can go ahead and do what we got to do but you need to decide what you want to do but let's confirm it let's find out where we are in this situation so she asked me to go to a sonography mm. and i remember sitting in that pathology uh thing i was sitting by myself and then I went weeping into the room also so i think everybody was cognizant of the fact that this is something i didn't want yeah or this is hap- this had happened so, by accident this has yeah, happened yeah, without yeah. intention that you're not all fluttery and like yeah. happy and i'm not like oh my excited. god this is great yeah. and i'm doing this alone and in yeah. movies we've seen it doesn't happen alone yeah it's hard to do alone you can't yeah. you know I, i don't know like maybe you can like yesterday i was watching a movie where you know this this woman she birth a baby and she chooses to do it alone or modern love yeah where the girl chooses to raise her baby alone but again it's a very different mm. mindset to mm. want to do that and you still need people around you who are going to be solid yeah like they're going to stand by you they're going to be your fort like right next to you they're going to protect you and i had nobody at this point first of all having premarital sex only is a problem how do you go explain that oh i not only had premarital sex i also ended up having uh, getting pregnant it was oh, it's too much and there is this mental chatter which is super noisy it's conundrum in my head and i couldn't deal with it but she said yes it's about i think 5 weeks mm. and i counted 5 weeks and it was endomids yeah so by that time as i got out the boy slash man showed up and I was wailing I remember I was incoherent nobody could understand what the hell I was saying even I couldn't understand what I was saying and he said we'll do what you want to do I said is what you don't do this to me right now already too many decisions to make and now you don't tell me now you make this decision if you want to have this child or not and it's a soul we're talking about right now I'm going into like the whole like who oh, oh, you're going to hell <laughs> babies are going mm. to like at you <laughs> and i was very scared i was very scared it was nothing that had ever happened mm. to anyone i even knew before uh but yeah i said uh, i'm going to take a week 10 days think about this and then come back and can you believe it fear i actually packed my bags and i went to krabi to host a wedding and made everybody laugh and sing made everyone dance. laugh made everyone sing and then i was sitting on um these sunbeds with two towels over my head and just crying you would find me in a bloody bath like it was crazy it was insane and i said i don't want to go through this trouble mm. i don't want to go through this feeling of incompleteness Hmm. I just felt like this was not how I wanted it. Yeah. I didn't choose for the, I did, would love to but not this way. Not this way. Yeah. Not this way. And when I came back from Krabi I was like I'm going to the hospital. I'm getting through with this and I am responsible for my actions. And I think when it was done it was done. I went back to shoot in Rajasthan after that. And I remember I had never experienced anything like that before. <laughs> It was really funny though now that you think of it. I'm already going through this really shameful experience, right? And the doctor says, "Do you want to see what we got out of you?" I said, "Are you mad? I don't want to see. It's it's traumatic enough." I said, "No, just to like I said, no. I do not want to see." I'm horrified by that question. Yeah, but I'm smiling because it's so bizarre. But yeah, um that happened. 